Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. On today's tutorial, I'll be showing you how to set up an automatic time lapse on your Raspberry Pi and camera, all in Python. And by the end of it, you will be able to create a time lapse just like this. So this is a small snippet from my time lapse I created of the Chicago skyline. You could see that it is just moving along in time. You can see the time in the top right corner. Now that is a little off because the time on my Raspberry Pi was off, but the gist of it is you can just create a time lapse automatically and string together the frames all on the Raspberry Pi with some simple hardware that is a Raspberry Pi and a camera. And I'll be showing you how to do that step by step in this video. And by the end of it, you will be able to make any time lapse you like, and of course, alter the code as you need be to adjust the time lapse as you like as well. So pretty cool here. You can see it's going into the nighttime and it's shifting. And I am just letting this play to the end here. And I let this run over, I believe, 25 hours, and you can adjust accordingly depending on your time-lapse needs. Now for the hardware, as I mentioned, you will just need a Raspberry Pi camera. This is the camera I'm using today in a Raspberry Pi. I'm using a 4B model. I also am using a tripod to hold the Raspberry Pi in place. You can see I'm just holding it like that. And I just taped the camera on to the Raspberry Pi to keep it stationary. Really, you can use better hardware here to actually have a specific case that holds the this specific camera module in a in a stagnant position. I'll link a couple in the description down below. I, I didn't use those, I didn't have any at the time. So I, instead I just taped it to the back there and I just pointed it at the Chicago skyline over 24 hours and I let the Raspberry Pi do the magic with the Python programming language. So if that's what you wanna do guys, set up a time-lapse on your Raspberry Pi and camera, this is the video for you. So enough being said, let's jump right into it. Okay, so first things first, you just want to connect to your Raspberry Pi in some way to be able to write code and access the terminal. Now I'm connected to my Raspberry Pi, as you can see here, via the Visual Studio code on my local computer over the SSH protocol. I have a whole tutorial series of how to do this. It's just my preferred way of interacting with the Raspberry Pi, especially for writing programs, Python code, and that sort of thing. You do not have to do this. You could just instead connect your Raspberry Pi to a desktop and just use a mouse to move around the desktop. But sometimes I don't like that because I think it's just faster SSHing into it from my local computer and writing code. So if you're interested in interacting with your Raspberry Pi like this, you can go ahead and watch that series, which I will link here. Otherwise, you can just go ahead and sign into your Raspberry Pi and create files and open the terminal exactly and follow along with what we're doing here. So now that you are into your Raspberry Pi or you're in a directory you would like to create your project, I'm in my desktop directory, you can just go ahead and create a Python file, name it whatever you like. We're just going to call it timelapse.py. And this is the main file we'll be running today to actually run the time lapse over a certain period of time. Now, just quickly going over this file, which I will link down in the description below if you do not want to copy line by line in this video. This file, just simply what we have is some imports, CV2. So CV2 allows us to actually add or manipulate images. So we're just going to use it to add the time to the top right of the image for the time for the time frames or for the frames to show you that each frame is moving along forward in time. So I think it's a good visual indicator to have in a time lapse. Another important package we have here is the Pi Camera 2, which will allow us to actually interact with the camera we're using today and create a camera object and to take images. So that is the most important package, of course. And we have some other system level packages here which do some operations. I'm not gonna go too much into those, pretty standard Python packages. And so we create that Pi camera object and we just have some properties here. So the most important property is the size of the image. Pretty standard size I chose here. You can play around with that as you like. And you could read more about this create preview configuration function. There's a lot you could do with these Pi cameras and a lot of properties you can play with to get the time lapse exactly as you like. You could do fancy things, even add filters, adjust the gray scale and that sort of thing. Next, the time-lapse settings, we just want to have a capture interval. Now, I'm just capturing an image every 10 seconds. You can play around with this and increase it and decrease it as you like. And also, the duration of the whole time-lapse is 25 hours for me. You can, of course, once again, decrease this and increase this. I thought this was sufficient for a simple skyline time-lapse. Of course, if you're doing something longer, you can run this for days or even weeks, I think. Uh, maybe make sure your Raspberry Pi does not get too hot if that is the case. Next thing is we just have this timestamp. So every time we run this code, we're creating a new directory that has a timestamp on it for that whole time lapse to save all the frames of the camera that we are taking every 10 seconds. And then the main loop here is just pretty much taking an image every 10 seconds and it's using CV2 to add that text overlay on the image. That is the time on the top right. And then finally, it's just saving that image to the directory we created 
and it's just waiting 10 seconds. And then it's just going to repeat that until the code is done. So that's really all we're doing in this time-lapse file. Incredibly simple. Now, if this is your first time using Pi Camera, you will not be able to run this because you have to install some packages. So just go to a terminal on your Raspberry Pi and type in this command. So sudo apt update. And then once you have sudo apt update, uh, running you could just do sudo apt install python3 opencv python3 flask and python3 pi camera 2. now the reason i say flask is because we just want to run a quick flask app to show the angle of our camera before we actually use it for the time lapse so i think that is important so that's the next code i'll show you right now so go ahead and first enter these commands sudo apt update and then sudo apt install python3 opencv these are two separate commands the update first and then the apt install you can see I have everything installed, so that is awesome. So we should be able to run this code. We're not going to run it yet. The first thing I want to show you is this camera tester.py. So I'm not going to get into too much detail about this code, but pretty much what this code does is it creates an application that allows us to view the video stream of the Raspberry Pi camera in real time. Now I have a previous tutorial series where I talked about camera streaming, so you can go ahead and watch that, which I will link here. This is pretty much the same thing. And I thought this is important because you want to get the angle right before you start the time lapse because you do not want to guess the angle and see how the, the images look after you take the time lapse. Really, you want to get the angle correct first and then start the time lapse. So you can go ahead and create another Python file and just paste this code in. And we're not going to go into too much details about this code because I already have another series that explains a majority of this code. And let's just go ahead and run this code here python camera tester.py so that's just another python file and this is just for a sanity check now you do not need this for the time lapse it is just strictly for a sanity check now you could see if your raspberry pi is connected to the same local network as your computer what you could do is you can go to this link here that is the ip address of your raspberry pi and the ports and then you can go to chrome and then you could just paste this in in the video feed and you could see where it is pointed. So that is just for a sanity check. Mine is still in the same position as the original time lapse. I did not move. You can see things moving and that sort of thing. And you could just keep adjusting until you like the position of your camera. And once that is done, you can go back to the program for the Flask application that you are viewing. And you could just exit it by Control C. And so now you are actually ready to run that time lapse file. So once you tested the camera, just go back. I am in the, the CLI. I'm just running Python through the CLI. If you're using Thani or, or that sort of thing, you could have just clicked the play button. So now I'm just going to run this time-lapse file. Really simple. And Python timelapse.py. And we're just going to let this run. Now, I already let mine run, but I'm just going to show you that it works. And we just let this run over a long period of time. Okay, so you can see it is running now and it is creating a time lapse. It's saving it to a certain directory on the device. So I'm not going to let this finish to completion because it's going to be 25 hours, but I hope you get the points and I hope you trust that it is working at this point. So I'll just show you the directory that it created and I'll be showing you one other tool that'll be useful to actually run this code if you're running it over a long period of time. So you can see if we do LS here, it just created a time-lapse directory right here, 0904. And we could just go into that directory and see that it has a bunch of frames. So that's the first thing. So it only took two frames because we only ran the code for 20 seconds. So that's a good sanity check to show you that it's working. And another thing I want to show you is TMUX, which is a multiplexer that allows you to run, to run uh, multiple programs on the Raspberry Pi. So I think it's a good thing for you guys to know because for example, if you're running this on your local computer and you happen to turn off your computer, what will happen is you will disconnect from the SSH session you will have on your uh, local computer connected to your Raspberry Pi. So instead we could use something called TMUX which will retain that process as we disconnect and you can go ahead and view it later on to check the status of your code if it is still running. Okay, so if you want to get TMUX installed on your Raspberry Pi, you could just go ahead and run a simple command and that is actually to sudo apt install tmux and we're just going to run this and this will allow us to actually set up the multiplexer so to set up your first tmux session you can just go and do tmux new slash s 
and we can call a session whatever we like. I'm just calling it time lapse two. So you can see we are in a session, and what's nice about this is even if we disconnect from the Raspberry Pi, we can view this session later on, and it'll still be running the code as we will be able to see. So in this session, we can go ahead and run the same command, and that is python timelapse.py. Okay, so I'm just going to run it. And we're just gonna let it run. And what's cool is even if I close this terminal, just go ahead and throw this out, we can do a new terminal. So imagine you disconnected from that SSH session. I can even close this Visual Studio Code and connect to my Raspberry Pi later on. And of course, if you have really nice, or if you have really long time lapses, this is something you'd want to do. We can go ahead and run another command to actually attach to that session to see what's going on. And that is actually tmux attach. Let me just get the command I ran earlier because I always forget tmux attach. And so let's go ahead and clear. So this is the command. And I'll just zoom in one more time to show you that. tmux attach t, and we'll call it time lapse two. And you could see that we attached that session. And in the session, we could see that the code is still running. So that is awesome. And I think that's good for beginners to, to learn this because tmux is used a lot in practice, especially for software engineering. Okay guys, so next, after your program is done running, after the whole time lapse time is done, however how long that is based on your setup, you can go ahead and make sure all the frames are there. So go to wherever the program was running, mine was in my desktop, type in ls, and you could see the, the time lapse directories. The one we're interested in today is the one that started at this time. So you can just go ahead and cd into the directory you're interested in. And once again, type in ls in the terminal and you could see all the frames are there. Now that all the frames are there, we know that we can just string them together to create the time lapse in ascending order of the, the creation of the frame. And in order to do that, we're going to run an ffmpeg command. ffmpeg is a free open source video software that comes on, or it can be installed on many computers such as the Raspberry Pi, the Mac, any computer really, and we're just going to install it. And we're going to run a command that pretty much strings all these together, 30 frames per second and produces an MP4. So really that's all we're going to do. So let's go ahead and clear this. Make sure you are in the same directory as all of your frames. And we just want to, first of all, install that program if you haven't already. So sudo apt install ffmpeg. You may have used this before if you have been working with videos on your Raspberry Pi. And then we can go ahead and just type in this command, which will be in the blog down below. So this is just an ffmpeg command, which is going to find those specific frames in this directory, and it's going to string them together in a certain format and a certain frame rate, and it's going to produce a timelapse.mp4 file. And you can go ahead and click enter here and let the magic happen. Now this does take a certain amount of time because there are so many frames, especially if you increase the frame rate in your time lapse or your time lapse is longer. So just let this process and we'll get back to it in a moment here once the timelapse.mp4 is created. Okay, so awesome, looks like the command finished running and if we could just type in ls to see that the mp4 is there, so it looks like it was created. Now I just want to get this timelapse.mp4 to my local computer. So in order to do that, we could just go ahead and open a terminal on a Mac or a CMD in a Windows and make sure you have SSH enabled on your Raspberry Pi at this point to be able to run this command if you want to transfer the file this way to your local computer. It's a really nice command that allows you to transfer files between your local computer and your Raspberry Pi very easily. And that command is just SCP. So I believe it's secure copy protocol. I may be wrong there. And pretty much we're going to SCP your user on the Raspberry Pi, the IP address of your Raspberry Pi, and then where we want it saved on our local computer. So I'm just going to save it, or where the location is on the remote desktop, in this case, where the location is on the Raspberry Pi. So that's desktop, time-lapse frames, time-lapse down before, and then where we want it saved on our local computer. Let me zoom in a little more, just to make sure that's clear. So this is the command. So if you have SSH enabled and you're on the same local network as your Raspberry Pi on your computer, you can run this command just to copy it over easily and just type in enter. And I'm just going to type in my password and it should transfer over. So it looks like everything is good. Otherwise, you can just open maybe a browser on your Raspberry Pi, upload it to Google Drive, and just download it from your local computer. Many ways you can get it to your, to your desktop. I just prefer to do it like this because I believe it's the simplest way, especially if you're on the same local network as your Raspberry Pi, you might as well. Okay, so it looks like the command is done running. So let's just go and view the time lapse that it saved to my desktop here. So this is from my Raspberry Pi. And we could go ahead and play this from the beginning and we could just speed it up 
and you see that it is running. So it looks like everything worked as expected. Pretty cool seeing cars move by, seeing the skyline or the, the clouds move to the right, which is pretty awesome. And of course you could have much more interesting time lapses than this. This is just the best I could do for my apartment just to show you guys how to set this up. So that's pretty much it everyone. I hope you learned something new and I hope you got it working for you. If you did, please consider liking, subscribing, or commenting on the channel and let me know what you wanna see as well. We did a lot in this tutorial and I know it could be confusing for some beginners. So if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below. If you want any work to be done, you can also hire me on Upwork. I will link that down in the description below. If you'd like me to set up some things for camera and other software engineering projects you have in mind, I can certainly assist there. Just follow me on Upwork or reach out to me on Upwork. And also you can consider donating as well on the buy me a coffee link if you really enjoyed this video stay tuned guys thanks for watching and i will see you in the next tutorial